All right, I'm Brian McQuaid, uh, engineer at Google. I work on uh, the PageSpeed Insights analysis tools and making the web fast. And today I'm going to do a demo. Uh, I'm actually going to do a demo of something we're releasing uh, today, this morning, called the uh, PageSpeed Insights Critical Path Explorer. Uh, so let's go ahead. Um, we'll start with, we'll go find PageSpeed Insights. And so this is sort of this is the tool that, that we focus you know, our work on. And this tool's job is to sort of analyze a web page, come back and tell you precisely what you can do to make that page faster. We give you know, specific targeted suggestions you know, unique to each site, telling you, you know, what is the top thing that you can do to make this page faster. And so here we see, here's the results page. We've loaded the page in our sort of back ends in a WebKit renderer. We've analyzed all the content. We've analyzed the way that content was loaded. And now here we've got our report. And so we can see the top thing that we're suggesting, we've got sort of the suggestions on the left in priority order, is to enable compression. Right? And so we can see that this page could save, apologies for the tiny font. How's that? All right. Um, we could save you know, 111K by compressing content on this page. And then subsequently, there are other suggestions that become progressively less important. But these, you know, we try to tell you precisely what you need to do, right? You know, sprite these images, um, doing the best we can to give you that guidance. But the thing I want to focus on today is what's called the Critical Path Explorer. And so this is sort of a, a little bit of a different take on the waterfall. Um, and so this is like you know, an HTTP waterfall that you're familiar with. There are two things we're trying to do differently here. Uh, one is to show you the dependencies between resources, so understand sort of you know, why was this delayed, what blocked it, what loaded it, and visualize that. And also to help you understand you know, with that information what's blocking the renderer from making progress and what's blocking the renderer from drawing content onto the screen uh, that users uh, are ultimately sort of affected by. So let's go ahead and zoom in, if I can click there. Ah, there we go. I'm going to zoom in to the head of the waterfall just so we can really look at that. I'm going to chop the HTML out. All right. And so let's take a look. Uh, OK, so here we are at the head of the waterfall. We've got our resources in an order here. There's the HTML. This is a CSS resource, JavaScript in orange. And so what we can see here. Well, I should say, you know, in order to accomplish those goals I talked about earlier, there's sort of two things that we're doing a little bit differently here. One is that we are showing not only the download time, which is sort of the first component of each row, but also this sort of execution or apply time, the time that that resource was actually interacting essentially with the DOM and actually making mutations and you know, changing, you know, applying styles, executing JavaScript, whatever that is. So in this case, we've got a resource that was downloaded here, but then its actual execution happened right here. And so with this information, we're able to understand you know, sort of what loaded what, what the order you know, within the renderer was, and then present resources not in network order, but actually in renderer order, which is a more sort of faithful representation of ultimately what impacts the end user. And so with that information, we, uh, we can show you really clearly sort of what's blocking the renderer. Right? So if I ask the question, well, what's in the critical path to executing this JavaScript resource, we can click, and we can see that the download of that resource is entirely in the critical path of the renderer for that. And the reason for that, if we go back over here and we highlight the link between the resources, this is really uh, challenging. There we go. So you probably can't read that, but what that says is that this resource, map1.7.7.js, was loaded via document.write. So it wasn't discovered by the preload scanner, like all these resources that are sort of loaded early. But it was needed immediately by the renderer, hence its sort of placement right there after where it was loaded. And so the download of that resource was entirely blocking the renderer, and that was a place that we were slowing down the page load. And so you know, subsequently, if we sort of walk our way down the waterfall, we can see you know, that these CSS resources are all applied. There's the tiny, essentially the, the takeaway, one of the takeaways is the time to apply the resource to the DOM is generally very short. The time to download it is, potentially very, is generally very long. And so if you can get that download time out of the critical path, by letting the uh, renderer discover the resource in the HTML, like these resources, you'll let the page load much, much faster. And so again, so we start to see, you know, here we've got a document.write that's blocking. We've got another. We've got another. We've got another. And these are really what's blocking the page from loading. Here, here's an interesting case, a little bit different. Here we have a resource called embed.js that's um, actually redirected. This purple area is a redirect. 
And due to the redirect, it actually pushes the overall download out. So here's the actual download of that final resource. And so because of that redirect, which took a really long time, that resource actually ended up on the critical path. It was discovered early in the HTML, which is great, loaded right at the beginning, but it ended up on the critical path due to that redirect chain. And so let me just scroll down. So here I'm going to sort of zoom out. I'm going to show the whole path to DOM content. There we go, that blue line, that blue tick at the top is DOM content. And so now we can say essentially, you know, well, what is the critical path to DOM content? And the critical path explorer will highlight just the things in the critical path and sort of remove the lines, the sort of non-blocking things like uh, style sheets that don't have matching media queries. There's a print CSS and there's a mobile CSS, and we'll see those go away here. And now we can see precisely what's blocking. And the story is um, a familiar one here, unfortunately. We're, we're seeing lots of you know, downloads that are blocking like this one. And the reason, again, is that you know, we're, there's a use of document.write. And so if these resources that are document.written into the DOM were just referenced in HTML, they'd actually be downloaded way back here. And we'd see this you know, sort of time to doc, uh, DOM content pull in substantially. Um, and uh, you know, my sense is that we could reduce the time to first paint on this page, probably you know, cut it in half by just sort of removing those blocking document.writes and pulling them in. And so, so what we're trying to do with this tool is really help you see precisely uh, you know, where you should focus your attention in terms of making the render render content to the screen faster um, to make the user experience better. Um, we hope that you'll find this useful. And uh, we'll be in the uh, Google booth towards the end of the lunch time if you want to swing by and let us know uh, what additional features you'd like to see from us here. Thank you.